Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, the artist behind the channel. And um, if you're new here, this channel is all about mixed media, mixed media abstract, art journaling, affirmation art journaling pages. And if you hop on over to my Facebook group, I do a Studio Sunday sort of special behind the scenes and little extras for my group, which will in the future uh, become lessons, tutorials, and, and all that great stuff. So um, I was exploring some other artists that I love, and I've always wanted to start a, um, a painting with a red underlayer. It's finding the right uh, reds uh, to start with that, that you like. Will that work? So this one is yellow oxide and cadmium red hue. And it's okay. It's a little too uh, cool yet. I would have loved it closer to uh, like the orange up there in the upper left. Um, but you know what? I stuck with, I'm going to stick with it. I did. And I know that this red will be covered up entirely um, by the third and fourth layer. So why, why start with the red under layer? Just a warm tone. Um, when you scratch through the color, uh, the layer of color up above, the red shows through. And here I'm using my wedge just because I, I thought it was too thick and I wanted to scrape away uh, some of that, um, that red. And then it revealed, uh, it took away a little bit of the yellow oxide, so it made it a little more, uh, a cooler red. Uh, but besides that, um, stay to the end, and I hope you remember to like and subscribe and share this video and content. And if you're new here, there's many different types of, there's three categories, uh, I know I only have one color exploration one, but I have a new one coming up, which I'm going to do uh, today, Sunday, and start. Uh, those take a little more time, but as you can see, I'm drying the underlayer here because we don't want any mixing, and it's drying pretty quickly, and it's a very warm, sunny day. I hope it's a beautiful day where you are. So here we are. And now I'm just going to separate, um, draw my lines, and these are just guides. Um, I may or may not stick to them. Um, I want big areas, medium areas, and some tiny areas, and I want odds. So five or seven here. Now, in the end, um, um, of course, I like the black at the bottom. I like the weight on the bottom and um, sometimes I do a black on the top, a white, um, but I'm not really worrying at this point about which colors to do first. The only thing I'm trying today, as you can see, I've got the yellow, the Hansa yellow light, the turquoise, and of course, the other colors that I've mentioned, plus white and black. Uh, teal from Golden, I found that color to be the best at this point, um, you know, until I experiment with more blues, uh, to put a beautiful layer on top and combine the teal with the yellow oxide or yellow ochre, if you don't have yellow oxide. And I'm thinning it out with the fluid, the high gloss fluid. And let's see what happens here. So I know I want a bluish or a greenish. What do I do here? Um, okay, there we go. So I'm making the decision and oh my goodness, I'm getting a green. So I'm desaturating it with some black. And that really, really um, does a great job in that. And I really like, um, that's one of the best things that I love is when I watch what I've done. And then, because when you're in the, you know, when you're in it, the in those, in that process, I'm trying to focus on color today. 
and also um, the different subtleties of value or saturation and or not of the color. So it's a really nice neutral green and uh, and that's why I do color explorations in my in my or, or plan to do more and now I'm finding I really need to because uh, knowing the pro uh, the really the best under layer that I like that works uh, I need to experiment with oranges and yellows and all this kind of thing and you might want to do so as well so that video is coming up and I also will be doing some tutorials in my Facebook group about color and using less of it so towards more monochromo monochromatic palettes and simple palettes and I loved so back to the page um, as soon as I put this yellow on this and it started covering up the red oh, I felt more relieved and um, it's really a good idea to start with a real ugly painting like colors that you really are uncomfortable with uh, purples and all these things but that's the thing what do you do next what are your next layers so that's what I'm that's the stage that I'm at exploring um, one layer on top of another and, and just thinking of color not thinking about um, uh, the transparency or the texture or a pattern that's just way too much so why I called it mixed media abstract I was gonna call it an abstract landscape because as you can see it's really looking and feeling like an abstract landscape. And I like it more abstract uh, than traditional because I came from traditional landscape watercolor and I really wanted to move away from that. But now I'm finding it calling, calling me back. But I want to do it only in an abstract way. So as you can see, this color field on the top uh, why I added more blue and, 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 and am indicating it there is that if it's just subtle, it'll still be considered as one color field um, because I want it to be large and you don't want all your color fields the same. Um, you, want, you want them to be always be considering differences. Uh, narrow, wide, light, dark, saturated, not saturated and even have these these other shapes or wedges inside the color fields and this one i play around with because i'm just i'm just having fun and really not worrying about it and then i decide and not coming up yet that it's looking too much like a landscape and then i take it in another direction but if you don't want to, if you want to keep going and maybe put in a tree shape or just indicate something, um, you can. Which is very, this, this reminds me of my, closer to my Of Earth and Sky series, which is on my channel. So take a peek at that series. It's similar to my um, abstracts, but they're, they're slightly, they're more, you know, sky uh, water, you know, with blues as, as your sky, which is here and which is more traditional, but that's the only traditional color that I wanted to leave. I love the green that's going on. Um, well, as you can see, I sort of like the green, but I, I can't wait to cover it up. So I'm going to let, and when you let the um, little peeps and little cracks of the underlayer show through, that's what I'm exploring right now. Um, what layer is underneath? What layer is above? Scraping it away with those, with my color scrapers. Um, so I'm liking this, this is not bad. Now that it's going on top, I might want uh, a, a much lighter, oh, this is looking, isn't it feeling much better? The more that green that I covered, 
but I, I don't mind the little peeps underneath and the brush strokes. So to have more horizontal and to get a really cool texture, that turned out. So I'm loving it beside the darker uh, yellow ochre or yellow oxide. And I know orange needs to fit in here somewhere in a small amount and maybe um, below the uh, a very narrow band of orange, uh, below the yellow ochre. Um, and another way to get a beautiful, a beautiful orange and a very thin, uh, combining it with uh, yellow ochre is this uh, nickel azo gold. So the more orange, so then I overlapped that area and brought it all the way down. So now I've created a very large color field that is really different, a different size from the other two. And I'm liking that, but it doesn't stay that way. So uh, stay to the end, and um, I'm going to use, especially with black, yellow, and blue, black and white collage paper. This time I held off to the end, and uh, <clears throat> and, and it re I think it works. So, already really liking that I've made that little wedge closer, but in hindsight, I would have liked it more of that pure orange. So I go to the other side instead of the, go to the left instead of the right. So now there's like a gradation. So I thought, okay, well, let's take some of that layer off with my color shaper and just redefine the top. So I actually turn it around the other way, but yet get some texture that I can leave Okay, so there we go. So bringing that, so that's looking better already. Yes, okay. And as you can see, I have the yellow Hansa, yellow light, I forget what it's called. I know it's, I know that word's in there. I just forget which order. Um, it really is a powerful yellow, oh. Yes, and I love that, it, interesting that streak of purple. I just had to put purple in there uh, hindsight again, I probably would have liked it near the black at the bottom in some form. So making sure my layers. Now, I liked what I attempted here, but um, next time I'll use a much drier sponge and a much lighter value. So the uh, zigzag or that inner, those energy lines or whatever you want to call them um, have more contrast with the yellow ochre area below it. So here comes my orange again. I just really love orange and blue. <clears throat> but trying to use them, trying to learn to use them in, in different ways so it's amazing how you can use even the similar color palettes and get completely different colors. So I really think I need to really do some serious color exploration and um, because color is amazing. Um, what are your favorite colors to paint with? And what's your favorite color palette? Uh, leave some comments below, I would love to have a conversation, uh, start some some conversation of comments uh, amongst subscribers. <clears throat> so then I decide, and I really like those horizontal lines. Now, there's some of the color showing through. Maybe I'll use a thicker one next time. And already, that lighter on the top is looking really nice. So, like I said before in some other videos, I love to combine very, you know, similar collage paper. And what I didn't do today, because I wasn't thinking of what layers I would put on top of other layers and colors. So next time, 
I am going to have my collage selection right there. Um, and you might want to remember to do this too. Really get organized so you don't have to interrupt your flow and you can just grab any of the blues with something or, you know. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do next time. Having to jump up and look at the orange that the Nickel Azo makes with. So I used the brush and it was pretty dry, but in the end, I just don't think, so I'm going darker instead of lighter. So I think because of the parchment or that neutral down below, I think going lighter would have been better. So we'll see. We'll see if I'm right if when I do another one. And that's what we love to, that's what we should be doing. You know, we could be doing, there's no shoulds here, um, when we're exploring. So, not bad. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, five, six. So, and I love, this is the deli paper, the non-waxed, and I'm learning to be a little more gentle with it. It cuts nicely with scissors. And I just know that this blue, let's see, there we go, too landscapey. So I, nope, not doing it. And that's what you can do. If, if you find compositionally, you're always going back to something, um, you could just, nope, be aware of that and uh, just keep going in a different direction, something new, something fresh. But if you like it, use it. And I always love to do my voiceover with the piece or the page or the art journal page right in front of me so I can watch its progress while I'm watching the video and see the end result. And this bottom piece of, um, not, not, it's not tissue paper, it is the uh, deli paper, very transparent. And these, I remember, na uh, remember last week when I was creating some more collage papers, uh, instead of using tape, I used strips of paper across on my jelly plate printer. And these are the scraps left over. And I thought, man, these are going to be really cool. So as you can, as you sensed energetically, maybe <clears throat> The thicker piece was just too much. So I do put it up there at the horizon line. And here goes sort of a, um, this is where you can use a slight diagonal. Remember the black, uh, if, you, if you can see, it's sort of slanting down and the viewer's eye drops off the edge. So then I'm going to create, I know where it should go and it isn't there. It needs to be right close to the black and overlapping where the parchment and the black meet because then you're going to be able to see the layer underneath and it's so cool and it brings the eye back up and there's no dropping off and isn't it so cool I just love this discovery so if anything today um, loving how black and white goes with these yellow and blue the yellows and blues oh orange and blue. <laughs> and it's interesting because when I'm doing something new, I'm just like you, I'm just sitting here watching. <laughs> and I thought, oh yeah, right. I better do some voiceover. But it's just great to watch. So isn't it neat how it fits? Now it's not straight. I don't want it straight. I don't, actually I don't care if it's straight or not. But I'm noticing when I'm doing my so-called abstract landscapes or these color fields, I like when things are pretty straight but not perfect. And texture and subtlety and loving that I'm remembering to do this. But I do, I do get a little tear in the end, even though I've, um, I don't think my hair dryer heats up super, super warm. So it doesn't affect the tape so much, 
uh, you know, and have to go like, you know, a hundred times around. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm learning, but you know what? That's okay. Okay. So what I'm thinking now is I really don't like the zigzags. I'm trying to find, and I've been listening to artists, uh, collage, um, oh, uh, some discussions in other collage groups that I follow, uh, and you might follow them too. Of course you do, right? They've been saying that, uh, what's the difference, um, you know, a collage artist versus paint? Like why, why use collage? And it is, it does something pretty magical. Um, and it's the combining of materials too. Um, it's so cool. I love, uh, I don't like pure collage and I love just paint, just painting, but my favorite is mixing the two together. Love this. I almost was going to tone down those with the white and black with some blue and I thought, no way, I'm not touching that. So here we go. I wanted to lighten this up because it's driving me crazy. And then when I do, something else happens. I get a much lighter feel. It switches. I add a little bit of that yellow. And I love how you can see the layer underneath. I just didn't like the zigzag, so that's okay. Cover them up or veil them. And now you see the dynamic with just a slight angle there. And then I'm just playing with maybe bringing it closer to the uh, upper area and gradate it down. So uh, altering the value going light to dark or dark to light. And when you do that, that helps move the viewer's eye in that particular direction. So that's a cool trick to remember. It isn't a trick, it's just that's how our eyes work. So loving this much better than just putting on the pure parchment and light, making it much lighter down below because of that black and white piece. But soft edge, see the black and white piece has a crisp edge the collage and the same with the black below it and there's some really cool red peeping through there this is so cool and you know the more you try new things and then go ah oh, I can just cover that up anyway um, I think the more confident and freer we become uh, in our art making and our art journaling which is how what I use. It, my first intention was just, oh, I'll just use these art journals to practice. But you know what? I miss them. I need to do them all the time. And I can't just do big paintings and think of, you know, selling and galleries and all that. Yes, that's important, and that's what I'm working towards. Um, but I just love the platform of an art journal. So right away... I love the color, the colors work, but now it's too stripy. And no, so that softness was important. And then I thought, oh yeah, I forgot about line. And I only put one in, one dark line with the uh, Posca marker. And then it, it reminds me to, oh yeah, my pencil lines. I love my pencil lines. Why am I forgetting about that? And look how that subtlety just ooh, it brings the eye in. It just, it's more intriguing. There's more going on. Hmm. Oh yeah, I do use that one. The thin blue line. <laughs> I can almost, you know, almost title it. And, and it might not be literally that, but um, if you have trouble titling, and, and if I go on like a run of a whole bunch of abstracts, then I gotta come back and go, oh man, where was my headspace? What was I thinking? What are these about? So I'll, I'll Google, 
a thin blue line. Then I'll see what comes up, um, meaning, references, all of that kind of thing, poetry, uh, who knows, and then I'll go down the rabbit hole and there's a particular style of titling that I like. And I don't like literal titles uh, or anything that's too corny, you know what I mean? It, it's tricky, it's tricky. Um, but this whole new series that I'm working on is going to evolve from this one little eight inch by eight inch cradle uh, birch panel that I uh, created and sold, <laughs> and sold. Uh, and what was it called? Um, the Edge of Knowing. So I really like that kind of, those kinds of titles. I like to make the viewer think. That's, that's what we're doing. Question, wondering. Now that's that's okay. That's my usual style, right? But I thought, no, this whole painting is about getting away from that. So, you know, so too much blue right now. So now the ratio of your colors is important. So that's what is another thing that I want to explore. How much blue, how many different blues, and how much orange or this warm tone would look, oh, look at that. See, that's how I discovered it. I had to go dig in my pile of collage papers and there's a, a much larger wedge and it's gonna work because you see how it's lighter on the bottom and I know that I'm gonna carry some of that lightness across. Plus, um, so I put it a little higher and it's, it's translucent, so I love it. And this is the waxy one. Treat that it's a parchment tracing paper. Ha! I remember the I remember the name this time. Um, Catalyst wedge. <laughs> oh, man, trying to remember all these things. So it's okay. Those lines they're really rough, um, but I leave them. And of course, I don't want yeah I don't want them up there. You see, just down below. So now I'm taking some of that lightness, but not carrying it in a solid form across because that would just be too much the same thing. And I, and I can't make up my mind with the top. So I do end up putting that blue strip of collage, the other one at the top. So I decide to go darker rather than lighter. And then I do something with circles at the top, but very, very subtle. So that would be, you see how now that's sort of a sandwich of orange, a blue in between the orange. No, 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 that's not gonna work, ah, ha. Now, this is similar, yeah, it just, feel, it just felt better. Similar to the piece, but I think it's far enough away and it is a little narrower, but I do something different along its edge to add enough difference for it to work. And then a nice finale circle at the end. Oh, and another piece of collage. So stick to the end. We're not done yet. Um, I like the length of this video. It's 36 minutes. Uh, leave a comment below if you are liking the longer videos or the 20-something bit minute videos. Depends how much time we have on our hands, right? I would love to know. And I would also love to know other things that you would like me to demo on my videos. Ugh, now I'm in love with this, this paper. Now that I know the possibilities with this transparency. Oh, it's so cool. So now I'm going to, because when you cut it, you get different lines. And you can go uh, horizontal, vertical, diagonal. So now I'm really going to play... Um, you can use tracing paper and use the fan brush, uh, the, 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 the bristle fan brush, water down your black paint because ink won't work, not on that paper. And then just drag it lightly across, go just a whole bunch of different ways. I don't know if I demonstrated that yet, but hop on over to my Facebook group. 
So I love the dots. I could have. Could have, should have, would have. Not bad. But again, I wanted to do something different. And then I just do, I think I do two orange lines. Why two? I don't know. It just felt that. It just felt right. So it's all about feeling. It's all about responding. Okay, let's see what I'm doing now. And I just did this. Um, this now is uh, is Saturday, the night before, because I'm going. Uh, I'm going up to my art store tomorrow, while this is uploading, and can't wait to get some more paint, and see what else they have on sale. <laughs> so, tried the white. Didn't work. Probably because, probably because I didn't water it down enough. Didn't really need it in the end. And then I just brush that with a cloth. And then that just softens it up. And then I get this idea. I thought, it's, the blue area is so empty. And that's why I believe I'm trying to fill it with these collage strips. But they're not working. Too stripey. Too many of those. And that's what I'm doing. I thought, okay, uh, should I put it up there? That would have been cool. So I try to tear some pieces. And liking this, it's somewhat subtle. But then I end up tearing a tiny, tiny piece. Just like that. Nope, not that one. And see, balancing it with the wedge that's down there, it has to go diagonally to the right. So paying attention to that is important. Balance, um, unity. Um, there's, there's so many elements and principles that you, just, you can just learn a bit at a time. I find it so overwhelming if you try to uh, learn them um, out of context, like separately. I find uh, that didn't work with me. And I just, as I need to learn something, like color now, now I'll start going. Now, what did I do here? Okay, this particular tool is a child's tool. It's a stamping tool. And so much, if I was a kid, I would love this thing. But I love it. I'm, I am a kid, and I do love it. I'm a kid at heart. So liking those, seeing how they're standing out, and they're just being too loud, so then I decide, okay, I want to cover them up, but I didn't wait until they dried. So then I get this blurriness happening, which is a mistake, which is, you know, unintentional. There's no such thing as a mistake. And I go a little darker because I know teal is the makeup of this, you know, but this is, this is straight teal. And I love that. And oh yeah, right. No, don't think so. But the concept of it, here I am. Okay. So what I did was, that, that was a bit of a jump. What I did was, I just used the sponge. I started with white, then used the black, and I wanted it very transparent. And that's when my camera ran out of power, ran out of battery charge. So sorry about that. But now the big reveal... And see, you can see the red under there trying to peep through. That's still on the tape. So you can use your X-Acto knife to help peel that away. And yeah, so it's still... Um, sometimes I need to remember to go along the edge with the X-Acto knife before removing the tape, and it would just be a beautiful crisp line. And I like that spritz of nickel azo gold just in that area. And I like how it did spatter the white, that white rectangular piece. And just lifting and peeling. Oh, so seeing that and seeing the edge. So if that happens, um, you can hang on to it. And then, of course, go over it with the uh, gloss medium. Heavy gloss medium is what I use. So I'm just bending it, bending that paper back because it loves to lift 
And there's so many layers of paint on this one. It feels like a canvas. And, uh, yeah, and seeing and adding some more of the lines and the subtlety of those circles. See how I didn't like them, but they're still there, but they're pushed way back by putting another layer on top. And seeing the red underneath uh, the blue. Uh, so I might want to work with that a little bit more. And I'm loving that white and black shape at the bottom. And I use my fingers to go across the top so we have a dull black and a different black. And I hope you enjoyed um, this video. And here you can, I wrote notes on the previous page. Um, there's my colors, but I will leave them in the description. And I do that for all or most of my abstracts. And I will see you in the next video.